Welcome and good evening to the Lewiston City Council regular meeting for Monday, June 24th, 2013. We'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. Please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Next item is citizens' comments. Uh, we're going to deviate a little bit uh, from our, our normal uh, protocol. Uh, if there's any citizens' comments regarding the discussion on the closure of the Urban Renewal District, we'll allow citizens' comments at the start of that discussion. So with that, uh, this is an opportunity for citizens to address the Council on agenda items or other items you wish to bring to the attention of Council. You're encouraged to discuss operational issues in advance with the City Manager. We ask that in consideration of others wishing to speak to please limit your remarks to three minutes. Are there any citizens' comments this evening? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to presentations and public hearings. The first item is a proclamation for the Professional Bull Riders Week. <coughs> the proclamation reads, whereas Lewiston, Idaho is the county seat of Nez Perce County, one of the most premier locations in the nation for outdoor events, including hunting, water sports, bull riding, and more. And the Lewiston Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, one of the most active RMEF chapters, is partnering with the professional bull riders, the PBR, the world's premier bull riding organization to create history in Lewiston by bringing the Lucas Oil Touring Pro Event to Lewiston for the first time ever. And this event, the Les Schwab Tire Shootout, presented by Kendall Dodge, will take place on Friday and Saturday, June 28th and 29th, 2013, at the Lewiston Roundup Grounds. And the PBR features the best bulls and bull riders on the planet. And fans will witness the thrilling eight-second rides and jaw-dropping wrecks throughout their adrenaline-soaked performances as the PBR's insanely brave cowboys Risk it all against monstrous animal athletes that can weigh as much as 2,000 pounds. And this is stop five of 10 stops across the nation for the RMEF Big Bull Tour. Now therefore, the Lewiston City Council do hereby proclaim the week of June 24th through the 29th, 2013 as Professional Bull Riders Week and urge the citizens of Lewiston to attend the Les Schwab Tire Shootout. <laughs> And we have Tricia Smith here to accept. Come on up. Um, I just wanted to say on behalf of the professional bull riders, thank you so much for having us here. I know that I myself am personally beyond excited for this event this weekend. It's going to be outdoor. Just found out it's going to be nice this weekend. No more rain. <laughs> so I just wanted to thank all of you. I hope that I see you on Friday or Saturday. It starts at 730. We're going to have a lot going on. Our entertainers, our announcers, they're the best. Our bull riders are phenomenal. Our bulls are truly the best in the country. So if you enjoy bull riding, believe me, you don't want to miss this. And again, thank you so much for this. We're excited. Thanks, Tricia. Okay, we'll move on to present. The other uh, presentation is uh, Orchids Award. This is recognizing the winners of the 2013 Orchid Awards and Jackie Gilbert.
the Lewiston Historic Preservation Commission and the Lewiston City Council are pleased to announce those who have been selected through their efforts to protect and preserve the community's historic resources. We would like to congratulate these citizens for their extraordinary contributions of preservation and restoration of Lewiston's heritage to which connects our past to our future. And if Mayor Paul would like to present the certificates. <clears throat> so the, for the excellence in historic preservation goes to TD and H engineering for the office remodel of 210 um, Main Street. <laughs> Cultural heritage preservation goes to Kathy and uh, Larry Schroeder for Bricker Bilk uh, Site 704 4th Avenue. So for the um, Distinguished Preservationist Award, we actually have two um, very prominent people within our community. Lyle Wertan um, for the Buick, um, Buc sorry, Buckeye Temple. quickly say something. The Buckeye Temple is an educational and cultural resource for the community, and if you haven't visited it in the Center for Arts and History, I would encourage you to. It's on the second floor. Uh, it is the one of only two Chinese temples in the United States, and you have it in your backyard. The uh, temple is uh, one of the best preserved and most complete of those two temples. So I would invite you to come and visit it at your leisure whenever the center is open. Thank you. Thank you. And the uh, second one goes to Gary Bush for his Chinese Remembrance Project, which is very, very interesting for all of those. I want to add something to what Lyle said. Lyle and I worked together for five years on a project that brought in not only a regional recognition, national recognition, but was written up in Chinese magazines in China, mainland China. And that recognition was centered on a 1887 event where the worst massacre of Chinese people in American history happened, and that was 63 miles upriver from where we are standing today. And so we uh, had the opportunity to interact with people from all over the world that came to Lewiston, Idaho. And the results of that in 1887 was the Chinese community funded the Buckeye Temple to the extent that you see it today. So please, as Lyle said, please, at 5th and Main, Center for Arts and History. It's one of the most profound pieces of history in America. There's only two in the United States. Thank you. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Uh, item E, Resolution 2013-30, approving a lease between the city and Lessor, uh, will be moved to active agenda, item E. Other than that, uh, is there any other items council wishes to pull off the consent agenda? If not, I entertain a motion to read the consent agenda as amended. Mr. Mayor, I move that we read the consent agenda as amended. Second. It's been moved and seconded to read the consent agenda as amended. Is there any discussion by council? Councillor Daniel? Okay. 
Councillor Stevenson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I had a, a question I just wanted to bring up about item D, and that is about the, not so much about the utility billing itself, the printing and mailing of the bills, but it, it represents there were a lot of bidders and a lot of different companies, and, and I, I'm wondering if there's some way that we can use our um, Valley Vision and other uh, resources that we have in this valley to encourage local businesses to either uh, spring up or study the possibility of being able to step in and do this so that we don't have to be sending our money to Anaheim or any other place that we can do this kind of thing here. I realize this is not quick, but I would like to plant that germ in, in the idea that we um, work towards being able to do this type of thing. I, I know it's very unique, it's a niche, and that's why I thought that it would be something that would provide work and, and tasks for our local people. Okay. And I don't know if anyone else has thought about that as well, but I hated to see it going out. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of reading the consent agenda say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries 7 0. Approving the minutes of the May 29, 2013 Joint City Nespers <coughs> County Airport Authority, the June 3, 2013 work session, and the June 10, 2013 regular meeting. Accepting the minutes of the May 8 and the May 22, 2013 Planning and Zoning Commission, and the June 5, 2013 Transportation Advisory Commission. Approving resolution 2013 31 by title only. A resolution declaring various items of municipal property to be surplus and providing an effective date. Approving the bid award for utility billing statement printing and mailing services to InfoSend Incorporated of Anaheim, California at an estimated annual cost of $77,256. And approving the vouchers payable from May 24th through June 6, 2013, in the amount of $979,995.23, $979, and this excludes payments to Han Rental and Han Supply. Okay, the consent agenda has been read. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as read. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion by council? Councilor Daniel. I just had a statement or a question for resolution 2013-31 uh, item C. Um, we're going to pretty much, these items are going to be sold on propertyroom.com. And I just, in the future, could we maybe get a, it's on, on the resolution it says a percentage of the pro proceeds from the auction will be paid back to the city of Lewis. And I'd like to know approximately what that percentage is in the future, as well as why we chose them versus a, a local op auction. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I think we can do that. They, uh, propertyroom.com handles all of our police surplus property and has, for I don't know how many years now. But. And I understand what, you know, the police items, but there's also the lost and found items, which aren't equipment based. And so there's some items I'm sh in that list. I'm sure there's some local people that enjoy bidding on that. But with propertyroom.com, you have to register a credit card, and a lot of people don't like doing that. So. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. <coughs> Motion carries 7 0. Move on to the active agenda. This <coughs> item is resolution 2013 33, possible authorization of the placement of the replica of the first territorial capital building on city property at the corner of 3rd and Capitol. I'll entertain a motion to read resolution 2013 33. Mr. Mayor. Did you do it? Moved. Jed, so you moved? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to read resolution 2013 33. Is there any discussion by council? Hearing none, those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries 7 0. Approving resolution 2013-33 by title only. A resolution authorizing the placement of the replica of the first territorial capital building on city property at the corner of 3rd Street and Capitol Street and providing an effective date. 
Resolution 2013-33 has been read. I'll entertain a motion to approve Resolution 2013-33. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Resolution 2013-33. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve Resolution 2013-33. Is there any discussion by Council? Councilor Daniel. Do we have an amount of, uh, approximate amount that this is going to cost? No, it doesn't cost the city. Well, it doesn't cost the city. Well, I guess I'm, I'm getting around to, are we going to incur any costs as a result of losing those parking spots? Will there be any overtime for our people moving between the facilities? No. Like that? Okay. that was clarified this yeah. last week. Count, uh, City Manager Bennett. Thank you, Mayor, members of the Council. Uh, yeah, we have discussed this over the many months between the time that this project was proposed with the first Territorial uh, Capital uh, Renovation Committee. Uh, and they have um, always maintained that they would be responsible for any costs associated with the location of the uh, replica of the territorial capital uh, on the site. Uh, and so we will be working with them to um, create a, 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 an appropriate lease agreement uh, for them to use the site. And uh, that will also contain uh, language that will ensure that you know, the costs are um, Taken care of as they were, you know, said they would do. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none, those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries 7 0. Next item on the agenda is resolution 2013 34. Authorizing the modification of the subdivision requirements of Chapter 32 of the City Code. I'll entertain a motion to read Resolution 2013-34. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. It's been moved and seconded to read Resolution 2013-34. Is there any discussion by Council? Hearing none, those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries 7-0. Resolution 2013-34 by tech only. A resolution authorizing the modification of the subdivis subdivision requirements of Chapter 32 of the Lewiston City Code as is permitted by Section 32-49 of the City Code for the construction of a well by the Lewiston Orchards Irrigation District. Finding that extraordinary circumstances exist which require the modification of the subdivision requirements. Deeming that it is appropriate for the public health safety and welfare to modify the code requirements and providing an effective date. Resolution 2013-34 has been read. I'll entertain a motion to approve Resolution 2013-34. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. Okay, Councilor Kleber. <laughs> We're gonna have some discussion? Yeah, a discussion. Okay. Now that I have a second. motion and a second. We can discuss it. Now. Yeah. Got a couple questions for Laura. And I don't know if I'm misreading this or not, but uh, on the uh, the history and commentary, they're talking about uh, not implementing the subdivision code processing and planning requirements for creation of the lot. And then here in the back. I see the fire department has put some requirements on there. And I don't, has it been platted? For the record, Laura Von Tersch, Community Development Director, I know it has not been platted. The request is to allow the creation of a parcel that essentially floats within a much larger parcel without going through the platting process. It would be done by record of survey and deeds. Okay. No, that's fine, because the comment was they had no issues with the plat modification request as proposed. So I didn't, it didn't quite make sense to me. But, and five fire hydrants kind of seemed a lot, but that's a different subject. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other discussion by council? Sure. Councilor Randall. Well, the question I had was about the fire hydrants. It was where the source of water is going to be for those fire hydrants if it's going to be the Orchards Irrigation District or if it's going to be directly from from their regular fire lines or is it going to be from the well? 
I think their water line ends right at Ripon and Tent, so they could supply it. Is there somebody here from Lloyd that can answer that? I think Barney's here. Barney Metz is here. <coughs> Metz is here. Can Barney we put Bob. you on the spot? <laughs> I'm just curious. Because if the pump dies, then the water dies too. Barney Metz, general manager for the Lewis Norwich Irrigation District. I couldn't quite hear the question in the back. Is the source of water for the hydrants that are going to go out toward the pump? Is that going to come from the well, or is that going to come from your regular water line? It'll come from the w new well that'll be constructed. Oh, okay. Thank you. Any other questions, of Mr. Metz? Thank you, Barney. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion by council? Hearing none. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. <coughs> Motion carries 7-0. Next item of business we have is a discussion on closure of the Urban Renewal District Revenue Allocation Areas. Uh, I think to start off, we'll start with uh, citizens' comments. Again, we ask to limit your remarks to three minutes. If there's any citizens' comments, please come up, state your name and address for the record, please. Mr. Spickler. My name is Dan Spickler. Um, I live at 2726th Street, Lewiston, Idaho. Uh, I just wanted to uh, explain and apologize to the council. Um, we met uh, with the city council and the county commission about a week ago, and a question was raised at that time uh, regarding the clarification of some terms that we were using. Uh, and I'm not sure exactly what the question was, but the question was uh, about closing down a project or closing down an area. Uh, and I think I uh, misled the council. And so I want to clarify that uh, right now. And I apologize for having not been clear. Um, what I was referring to at that meeting was uh, Idaho Code 50-2903, subsection 15, and that makes a distinction between the revenue allocation area and the urban renewal area. And what I was <clears throat> trying to say is you didn't have to close down the urban renewal area, but you did have to close down the revenue allocation area. But then I went back and checked the plan, and instead of the plan saying that all three of the areas constituted the urban renewal area, the plan defines each one of the urban renewal areas as the um, uh, revenue allocation areas. So in, in effect, each revenue allocation area is defined as an urban renewal area. So when you close down uh, a, a revenue allocation area, you're also closing down an urban renewal area. But you have three urban renewal areas all included in the same plan. Does that make sense now? Does that answer? I mean, the question... I know it doesn't make any practical difference, but I didn't want to leave you uh, with a misapprehension from what I said last week. So I'm just I'm just trying to clarify. Any questions of Mr. Spickler? Mm -hmm. All right. Councillor Stevenson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Spickler. Although I'm looking at page 35, or at least of what I printed out of the plan, and it sounds like, I mean it confusing it doesn't match up with how you just described it or maybe I'm not reading this right is it just because it's confusing well it, it's <laughs> it's written the plan in very, and the area and the yeah RAA it, and the yeah but when you read the whole plan mm -hmm. it, it talks about the revenue allocation area being the uh, 
uh, urban renewal area. Mm. It doesn't describe all the three whole. of them as the urban renewal area. Oh, okay. The, the urban renewal area is defined within the plan. Yeah. Um, that's the problem is if you look in the definitions, there's no definition of urban renewal area. It just doesn't exist. So, in the statutes, oh, but the urban statutes. renewal oh. plan is okay. defined. You got the plan, but the plan defines three separate uh, mm -hmm. revenue allocation areas, but no no definition of the urban renewal area. So that's the problem. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Good evening, City Council members. Doug Havens, 3513 22nd Street. But I'm here tonight as a county official, so I appreciate the opportunity to speak during this actual discussion. I had prepared some comments for citizen during citizen comments, so I'll try to work through those. Uh, you have a unique opportunity tonight, something that's not done very often, I think, across the state, and that's actually complete a project and close it out and re reap the benefits um, for your uh, taxpayers. And also, I mean, uh, you have an opportunity to discuss the people that, that have some expertise <coughs> in this. The count, we have, you have several county officials here and staff available to answer your questions. I mean, after all, this is what the county does. We, we set values, we uh, work with levies, collect the tax, collect revenues, disperse revenues. City sets your tax rates, that's, that's up to you. Uh, but the expertise is here in the audience. So I, I encourage you to take advantage of that. You know, I've been on the Urban Renewal Agency for two and a half years as a uh, county commissioner casting votes. Prior to that, two years as the mayor, city of Lewiston. Prior to that, two years uh, just a council member uh, dealing with uh, issues that would come forward from the Urban Rental Agency as project in project form, one of those being the parking studies that took place um, downtown Lewiston. We did two of those. So I'm not unfamiliar with the agency and how it works. In your packet tonight, you have information. I took advantage of the online uh, packet to review that. and. Um, You'll be hearing from staff, I'm sure, explaining some of this because a lot of these numbers are new to the county. We can't even figure out what's going on here with some of these um, values and exactly what they mean. So we're curious, too, to hear that explanation. Um, after all, we're dealing with uh, closure and uh, revenues that will amount uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of $561,000 back to the city. and. Uh, 279,000 to the county, much needed revenues, uh, at least from what I hear of your work session today, you're gonna be looking for all kinds of revenue. And this one comes with no cost. I'm also concerned that this information provided for you to you at this 11th hour, I'm calling it, is some sort of a paper storm to confuse the issue because we've been discussing a lot of this over an extended period of time and now to be to give, be given new information at this time when a vote surely should be cast, it, it is concerning. You have a project list too in your packet that um, concerns pr uh, possible projects and uh, I hope you've reviewed that because some of the projects discussed uh, have to do with the Port of Lewiston, a taxing district unto itself, in which I read in the paper uh, <coughs> Uh, the other, not too long ago, collecting monies to use for economic development. Well, that's what those projects are listed in there. Why the port doesn't spend money on economic development, I have no idea, because that's what it's identified as, monies for economic development. You have a port representative here tonight. Take advantage of that commission member and ask her. You also have needs in city roads out at the port area. I, would, I think that is your... Uh, 
duty to maintain those roads. It's not a part of a URA project. Part of the city's very existence is to take care of roads. That's what being incorporated means. That is one of your budget items. Don't look to urban renewal to do that. I know I'm taking up a lot of time. Let me close out with, um, because I think it's important to look at history when you're dealing with an issue like this. And I've said it before, what were the people told in 2005? What were they led to believe in 2005? And then you have to look at the minutes back in that time. October 12, 2005. I'm just gonna take comments because I don't have time to read this whole thing, but Laura Von Tersch illustrated how only a 0.29% of a local taxing agency's property tax collection would be diverted to projects of the URA. Or for the city of Lewiston, that meant $47,000. Chairman Nesset, then Mayor Nesset, commented, he pointed out that is still $47,000 that would have to come from other sources. He knew what that meant. He knew if you're gonna divert $47,000, the city would be made whole by having to inflate the levy rate to make up for that $47,000. They weren't going to just lose that money. So he was concerned by that. How much more concerned would he have been if he knew the actual dollar figure. These were projections. After all, $47,000 times eight and a half years, which is the life of these projects that we're dealing with now, comes to $399,500. But in actuality, the city of Lewiston has diverted, or urban renewal, because of urban renewal, $3 million has been diverted from the city funds. 1.5 from the county. I mean, these were projections, and he was concerned about 47,000, and actually three million for the city. How much of a difference would that have made? In response, Laura Von Terse emphasized, all bond payments can be accelerated to pay off bonds early. So that's, that's what staff's uh, response was to Mayor Nesset's concern. Well, we can pay the bonds off early. Now, an, an average person with an average intelligence would mean, would, I, I would think, would come to understand, well, that would mean that you would close it down, that you would no longer pay, for bond, uh, pay on additional bonds, future bonds, future projects. That would alleviate that concern of that $47,000. All bond payments can be accelerated to pay off bonds early. Boy, that'd be wonderful. And that's what we did. We paid off bonds early. And, we, and Urban Renewal is be congratulated for that. And I think it's time that the uh, government keeps their promise. That's what you told the people. That's why people lose trust in their government. So I would encourage you to bring that to a vote tonight and do the right thing. If the county can be of any assistance, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you. Jim Kloss, 520 21st Avenue. Um, and I was going to speak at Citizen Comments, but I wasn't quick enough, so I'll combine those comments with, with the urban renewal. But <clears throat> last night, my wife and I went to the movie World War Z, and it's a movie, it's a kind of a frightening movie about zombies, but I wasn't too frightened because I knew it was just fantasy. But today, as the sole public representative, as far as I could tell, at the Lewis and City Council work session, I actually was frightened way beyond World War Z because this could really happen. And today, what was talked about was increasing property taxes 3%, taking foregone tra taxes to whatever degree, creating LIDs, uh, franchise fees that would increase your Vista utility rates. I mean, it was a smorgasbord of how many taxes, how fast could we raise them? Now, I realize it was a brain uh, storming kind of a session and not all those things are going to happen. But I think enough of them could happen of a very substantial amount that people should be concerned. I was, you know, and I, I didn't expect to see a crowd of people at the meeting today, but I would like any citizen out there to know that this particular council is really talking about some huge fee increases. 15% increases on water rates. We know it's already 
it takes your breath away to open a utility bill from the city of Lewiston every three months, especially during the summer months. And I think anybody that's on the Lewiston water system Mr. knows Klus, that. Mr. we're taking citizens' comments on the urban renewal closure. And I'm leading to that, but because you're quick draw McGraw, I didn't get a chance at the beginning. So anyway, all this being, they're looking for money to give back to the urban, uh, or back to streets, additional street work, which I think is fine. I think that's great. We could stand additional street work. I'm supportive of that. There is an opportunity to close out two of the three urban renewal districts. I don't have to repeat what Councilor or what Commissioner Havens just said because he speaks the truth. They have accomplished their goal. The whole idea was to create a better uh, environment and to create taxable value on blighted properties. That's happened. It's time to close it out, return that money. And instead of having to raise taxes and raise fees for the citizens, close out two of those three urban renewal districts, create the money that was just stated. That alone would pay for the additional money they want for street improvements. You know, the city council needs to kind of do something. 95% of the general funds available year in, year out are already obligated, mostly to salaries and payroll and that kind of a thing. But the city council ought to have a little bit of control over four or five percent on an annual basis to where they can create, fund a project, do something, accomplish it, be done with it. And you know, if, if we're expected as citizens to suck up and pay extra taxes on, on property tax, why is it not possible for the city to suck it up and maybe have each department say, we got to find a 2% out of each department to cut back on? And that's going to be the city's contribution to, to good jobs. It's easy to raise taxes. That's a no-brainer. That takes no mental intellect. It takes no exercise in, 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 in mental conditioning. I mean, anybody can do that. But it takes a little bit of brain work to figure out, hey, let's manipulate these numbers a little bit. Let's take it easy on the, pro on the, on the, on the, pro on the taxpayers, and we'll fund the projects we need to fund. But I'm just sending out the word that today was an incredible meeting. I mean, it was almost it was almost like an addiction. It's a tax addiction. We aren't fighting World War Z like the movie I saw last night. We're fighting World War T, which in the city of Lewis it means incredible taxation. Thank you. Any other citizens' comments on the urban renewal? Thank you, Mayor and Council Members, for giving me the opportunity to speak today. My name is Mary Hasnerl. I live at 2124 Birch Avenue in Lewiston, Idaho. Um, first of all, I would like to congratulate the past members of the Urban Renewal Agency. I've been on the board, but only for a couple of years. And I really do appreciate the work that they've done, that the value they've given back to our community. So thank you very much for any of those members that have done that and, and had the foresight to do that. Um, in today's economic environment, the, pub, the private public partnerships are important to encourage job creation and business investment. Projects undertaken by the Urban Renewal Agency have returned a one to 13 cost percentage ratio benefit to the taxpayers. So for every dollar they've spent, they've been able to bring back $13 to the community. Um, this is obviously a sound financial investment. And also as a Port of Lewiston commissioner, um, the Port of Lewiston would like to encourage the City Council to allow the Urban Renewal Agency to thoroughly explore appropriate infrastructure improvements projects in revenue allocation areas one and two. If appropriate projects are not identified, then the areas should be closed down. But I think it's important that we go through that planning process and we're able to determine that. To be clear, the Urban Renewal Agency has identified infrastructure projects in areas one and two that could add new jobs and investment in Nez Perce County. Extension of the Nez Perce County Drive in area two and transportation system improvements in area one could provide significant job growth. The port has retained an engineering consultant to identify transportation infrastructure improvements in the North Port area. We hope that the City Council will allow the Urban Renewal Ag Agency to provide their project recommendations in Area 1 and 2 before the Council takes any action on this. Thank you very much. Was that 
Hello, everyone. I'm Tammy Lewis with Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories with our new facility up on Juniper Drive here in Lewiston. Several years ago, we identified that we had about 140 employee owners living in the Valley region and commuting to Pullman every day. Um, this was especially difficult during the winter months when the roads were so bad. Um, and we decided at that time when we needed more manufacturing space that we were going to look down here so that we could improve their lives so that they don't have to drive, they don't have to spend the money on gas and the two hours of commute time every day. Um, we looked at land throughout Lewiston, Clarkston, and the general region. Um, we needed sizable acreage, at least 20 acres, uh, to allow for future expansion, and we preferred land unencumbered with um, lots of easements and that sort of thing. We ultimately settled on the location we did because it was large and mostly flat. Many of the other properties we looked at also had, um, had infrastructure nearby, and, um, but they were not large enough or flat enough for what we wanted to do. Or they had difficult geography that would have made the cost of building extremely expensive. The property we did land on um, had infrastructure nearby as well. As for the infrastructure the URA installed into the park itself, um, much of that did not work for our property, and we paid for that infrastructure along with the price of that land and then had to pull it out. Um, it was a tremendous waste, but it did not fit our site. We are thrilled to be in Lewiston and that our employee owners no longer have to drive and make that long commute every day. We're thrilled that they're able to be closer to their family and their schools and be a part of their communities. We do, however, take offense when people take credit for SELs, um, when the URA or media um, uh, stories we see in the paper claim that the URA is why SEL landed in Lewiston. That is not the reason we came to Lewiston. We came here to improve the lives of our employee owners, and if we hadn't um, settled on that location, we would have found another location because that's why we were here. That was the reason we were here. We look forward to continue to grow our operation here, and we believe that the city of Lewiston should focus on funding basic public util services. And regardless of what you decide about the URA, we want to be very clear that the URA's project did not and should not be credited um, for SEL landing here in the valley. Thank you. Council members, uh, Eric Hasnell, Celtic Engineering, uh, 315 Adams Lane. Uh, I'm here tonight on behalf of uh, Bedrock LLC. Bedrock LLC is the uh, um, company that brought the uh, commercial development of the Nespers Terrace commercial area. Um, it also, I'm speaking on behalf of the uh, MLP, uh, McCann's Limited Partnership. Um, I have a letter that, th that has been uh, signed by uh, Dick Vandervert as a managing member that uh, as a commitment to 50% uh, of the contributions towards the total project of the extension of Nespers Drive to Gun Club Road. Um, we met, I think, last year with the city of Lewiston, excuse me, with the URA, and we were discuss discussing projects. From that time, they have been working diligently on uh, the uh, trying to uh, solve the, the issue of the extension. And I think they have come up with a solution that certainly works for them and the people that uh, they have that uh, are interested in uh, coming forward and developing uh, more of the Nespers Terrace PUD. And so uh, I certainly come here and speak on their behalf to say that they wish that the uh, URA District Number 2 does not close, that they are certainly committed to it, um, and uh, they're very close to uh, having additional businesses come to town and uh, land in the Nespers Terrace PUD. And I have this letter that I'd certainly like to present to you if you, I don't know if they've gotten a copy of it before. Could you so, read it to us, Eric? Pardon me? Could you read it to us? Sure. Um, it's addressed uh, June 24th today. It's uh, Lewiston URA in care of Celtic Engineering, Eric Hasner, 315 Adams Lane, Lewiston, Idaho, 83501. It's regarding the extension of Nespers Drive to Gun Club. <clears throat> to whom it may concern. We, the private sector owners and developers, 
will agree to match the URA with 50% contributions toward the total cost of this project. If this project stalls, so will economic development in this area. If you have any questions, please contact me. Your attention to this matter is greatly appreciated. Sincerely, Richard A. Vandervert, Managing Member. Copies to Dave Doringsfeld, the Port Manager, Port of Lewiston, and Pat McCann, Partner in Bedrock, LLC. Just want to give us a letter sure. and we'll enter that into the record. Mm -hmm. Eric. All right. Thank you. Sure. Any other citizens' comments? Gary Bush, 912 18th Avenue, Lewiston. Um, <clears throat> there was quite a discussion philosophically about Urban Renewal Agency when it started. It had three areas. One was the gentleman just talked to us about where uh, Schweitzer Engineering is located today. And the other one was North Lewiston. The infrastructure was so poor that you didn't even know if you had water. Uh, and we couldn't place any businesses there. By expending the money through the URA in North Lewiston, we see a proliferation of businesses that have adequate water and infrastructure, and you saw the growth of it after that. Um, the uh, terrace was improved, and I think that um, it was a, a benefit to this community of the vote to continue that development was happened to be when Commissioner Havens was not there and I had to chair that meeting. It was a 3-3 tie. I had uh, real misgivings about voting one way or the other and thought I could get out of voting uh, to break the tie to continue spending money at Nez Perce terrace and uh, I voted because I thought it was best for the community and struggled with that vote for a long time philosophically. Uh, ultimately we saw a large corporation, Schweitzer Engineering, come in and that uh, convinced me that I had voted the right way. But I come up here tonight to say that I think that there comes a time when uh, the needs of the city and the county and the school district, which is also impacted, become uh, equally important to those areas that I think we've accomplished what we have set out to do in North Lewiston and Nez Perce Terrace. So uh, I would encourage the councilors to really consider those two areas. And uh, I think the one that uh, downtown has uh, tremendous needs that can't be accomplished by um, not having the URA in that position. Um, I, the philosophical problem I saw is that it takes money off the tax rolls for the, for the school district, takes money off the tax rolls for the county, takes money off the tax rolls for uh, the city of Lewiston and sitting in the position that you have for for four years it was always a struggle with the financial responsibilities that the city has and I'm sure the school district and and the uh, and the county have the same qualms so I would encourage a, a real um, look into the two that I've mentioned and I support the URA for what it's done, and I agree with some of the other comments that maybe it's time to reevaluate where we're going with the URA. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other citizens' comment? Okay, we'll close citizens' comments down. Um, <coughs> Anything from staff at this time? Mr. Bennett or <coughs> Laura? I will uh, 
defer first to Laura, see if she has any comments she'd like to make. Otherwise, I can add Mr. a couple Mayor, of things. Mr. Mayor, if I could have Laura and Dan uh, give the uh, people at home and the people in the audience the facts on the return of the money that the URA has, uh, uh, has spent and uh, the return on that investment that we've got in the community so far. Okay. Please. The long and the short of it is, if you were to count every dollar that flowed through the URA's books, which we have, and you ask yourself, what did we create in terms of additional appreciation beyond which the city as a whole realized for the period in which the URA was in place, and what additional value did we can do we create in terms of construction dollars over that which the city as a whole experienced? What is the number? And it's twelve dollars and fifty some odd cents for every dollar that has been entrusted to the URA to invest in capital projects. I took the value of the appreciation citywide even with the uh, downturn at 0.3%. Three tenths of 1% was the average city appreciation for that period in time. And the average construction value um, has been tabulated, and that's what I had termed the control value in the graphic that was attached to your packet tonight. When you measure the value of those investments, the business growth, you know, you can, you can see the construction occurring in North Lewiston as a result of the water supply. I think you can be very comfortable in the fact that the URA has produced for you and it can continue to produce. And I view it very much as a seed crop, if you will. And I think it would be unfortunate for the seed crop to be eaten for day-to-day -day expenditures instead of planting the seeds and having them reap rewards <coughs> over a longer period of time. If the council feels strongly that some adjustments need to be made, then I will come back with some suggestions for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council members, uh, for the record, Dan Marsh. <clears throat> Administrative Services Director, 2317 14th Street, Lewiston. Um, and also uh, URA board member since its inception in 1999. The uh, plan or the board, for the most part, was idle until 2005, and that's when we brought forth projects and things were, uh, were, were rolling. Um, I guess my comments are not so much specifics and numbers. Um, Although I do think it's important to make sure that we make our decisions tonight not emotionally based, but factual and financial based. Uh, council uh, charged the agency about 45 days ago to look at the plan, look at the financials, uh, what are potential projects that are out there, and come back with a recommendation. We're in the process of doing that. We've been very, very busy. Um, it's really pleasing to hear the, the information tonight which if we were to partake a project in Area 2, uh, literally cuts it in half. Um, we were asked by a previous board member on the URA at one point in time, well, Vandervert, if you build, can we get a guarantee in its public record that Target is going to move to Lewiston? Because I can't give you a guarantee, but it sure speaks volumes if they're willing to spend about a million and a half dollars to me to help put a road in that they must be fairly optimistic that somebody's coming to town. Um, let the URA bring forth their recommendation. Give us a shorter time commitment. Um, I'd be the first to vote yes if, there is, if the financials do not back up the project. If they do not balance out, if it doesn't pan out, I mean, I was, I was the only loan no vote on the initial downtown project in 2005, and that's because it was parking only. As you can see, we didn't do parking only. Um, June 8th, the smiles, the comments, when we kicked off the new library 
and that downtown project was was overwhelming. I mean, that was just that was fantastic. So, a um, couple things. Nowhere in the plan nor the minutes have I ever seen that we will we will be created, we will do a project, and we will close the area. Nor does it say we're going to live on forever. I think you've got to give your board some credit, and that is when the financials and the project doesn't pan out, we'll close it. Um, last week, uh, several of us were in Boise for the AIC conference. Not one entity or individual recommended closing your areas. And that goes from the Department of Commerce to Twin, to Twin Falls, uh, Coeur d'Alene. Um, I encourage everyone to look at their websites, they being Twin Falls and Coeur d'Alene. They are rocking and rolling. Um, they wish us well, but they smirk when we fumble, when we become stale, and we do not invest in our community. Because quite frankly, it's competition. Um, you know, uh, Chopani uh, yogurt, uh, Cabela's. We had a shot at Cabela's as a warehouse unit. Those opportunities are there, but not if we become stale and gray and be happy with one or two home runs. If we can't hit a home run, let's close it. But gosh darn it, the momentum is, I mean, I can, the momentum's there. And, uh, and the numbers will pan out. Um, I will address some numbers in, the, in terms of area two. Um, I used 2.5 million as a, as a potential for that project. If we just now cut it in half, looking at the cash flow in four years, we could have that road in place. And what if it does bring a target for Marshalls? or a steakhouse. What if it doesn't? What do we do? Next year, we could be in the same position. This doesn't go away. We can close the area next year, the year after, or five years after that. What we do have is a 24-year time, time limit. So um, these new construction dollars, um, I, I sympathize with uh, the city and the county trying to balance our budgets. But I think we really need to look long term on investments to leverage dollars for jobs and, and <coughs> economics. Um, I'm sorry Schweitzer wasn't able to use all of our infrastructure, but we're sure darn glad you're here. Uh, I just want to reiterate that. Um, but if we can get a $13 for one return on investment, oh, man, that's, that's a pretty good return. So I would rather put it in long term capital for our community than see it absorbed for any operating expense. Thanks for letting me expand beyond numbers. Mr. Daniel. Mr. Marsh, you might be able to answer this. I, I wasn't quite sure on it. At our last meeting, our joint meeting with the, with, uh, with the Nez, with Nez Perce County, um, the tax assessor had mentioned that if we don't close it out this year, we'll miss our opportunity. Because of the change in law with the personal property tax, we'd miss out on a, an amount that would be set in stone. So even if we did close it out later on, maybe five years, we wouldn't get that, those monies, or at least that portion of it. Is that? A couple things, and, and, and I'd welcome Dan if he's still here to, to address that, because he's the, he's the local expert. Um, this, the fourth Monday in July is the actual date when the tax, State Tax Commission would like to know if we we're going to close an area or not. <coughs> By convenience, they would prefer June 30th. Um, I wouldn't let that rush us. However, there is the personal property uh, tangent that's involved with that. Right now, the URA, the city, the county, the school district, we're all going to be made whole with state revenues on any personal property taxes that, um, that, are, that get excluded. That may be part of the number that gets locked in. So as I know that is. So future personal property that gets added to the equation next year or during the year, that would not be reimbursed, is my understanding. But we can close our district this time next year, the year after. Um, and that is retroactive to 2006. I'm trying not to get technical terms, but any of the new construction, uh, regardless of the area, gets brought forward and can be levied. So how much is that that we'd miss out on from here on out? Other than the amount that we'd get going back, just that amount that we'd miss out if we didn't close it out before the end, end of July. Do we have an idea what well, the impact would Montour be? Well, Ms. shared some numbers earlier. I, I know area two, because I was just looking at it a few minutes ago. It was about 285,000 in total. Uh, maybe a couple, what, 185, 200,000 to the city? Is that, is that 
Is that what kind of? Or you're talking no, no, the backfill uh, yeah, yeah. dollars? Yeah, yeah. Because I think the legislature, the when they uh, did the personal property tax exemption, they said we'll backfill with state dollars for to a certain amount, and I think it's that backfill amount yeah. is what you're looking at. Oh, it's the personal property tax yeah. figure, I believe, January 1st of 2013, Dan. Yeah, yeah. Whatever the personal property tax figure that is in our equation, if you will, as of January 1st of, of 2013, is what will be made whole by the state of Idaho general fund. Not counting the URA areas. We are, we will be made whole as well. But the state task commission also said that the dollar amount of that won't be known until September, because it's only after everybody establishes okay. their levies. Yeah. And the assessed values are known after going through the Board of Equalization process that will have a dollar figure. So the county might have some idea of ranges, but we don't have the information right now. Okay. Mr. Anderson. If I, if I may. Mr. Mayor, Mayor and uh, Council, just to make Name sure that we're... For the record, oh, I'm please. sorry. Uh, Dan Anderson, uh, Post Office Box 1957, Lewis, Idaho. Uh, <clears throat> just to clarify, they, he, uh, what Mr. Marsh said is, is correct. Everyone is made whole. However, that portion that is increment that is in the urban renewal area under, under current uh, laws and think in Boise, that once the urban renewal areas would go back on, that amount of personal property repayment just goes away. And that's something in the neighborhood of about $47,000 approximately, not just for this year, but for going forward. And again, until, with all due respect, till the legislature changes its mind. But th that's... At this point in time, that's what would be lost as far as uh, from here <coughs> forward if it was not closed down prior to that uh, uh, July July 31st or whatever that other is. Yeah. 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 Thank you. So 47,000. Okay. I got another question for it. Okay. I, I, I was more than happy to wait for the recommendation from the URA, but my, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but is the U URA even meeting next month? Currently, we are not. Okay. We would be happy to, on my vote. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that we're not working on the, on the plan. If they're not going to meet, that doesn't mean that we've stopped working on it. This is not a, a plan that can be redone in three weeks or four weeks. This is a plan that's going to take a couple of months, three months, to redevelop and see what kind of projects and so forth there are. And if there is a reason to close an allocated area, that we would have that in our plan and come back here with a recommendation and a vote from the council. But that doesn't mean we are not working on a plan as we speak. For example, obviously there has been conversations and work with, with Mr. Hazrall and, and the developer. And so in closing, I'll sit down, but I, I just like to say, we have a lot of work to do, and I think it's more in the team building area. I think we need to work hard with the county, with the school district. I think we need to do more team building, set our visions out. Uh, that's how we're going to be successful. There's enough credit to go around for everybody. Um, let's just keep hitting those home runs. But we do need to do, I, I, in my opinion, uh, some uh, better uh, visioning sessions with the county, uh, others. And then lastly, I think we can't undereducate what a URA is, what do you do. Um, and I, so I think that's another area that we have a weakness and we should do more work in that area. Thank you. Councilor Orban. Mr. Mayor, as a relatively average person with average intelligence, <clears throat> I have just a few observations to make from the time that we started this, and Mr. Bush and I probably won't agree on some things. First of all, let me clarify, if you weren't there this afternoon, and whatever you read in the paper, we had an exciting afternoon discussion today on the availability of revenues down the road. Yes, we did talk about what a tax increase would cost. We talked about foregone taxes. We talked about LIDs. We talked about franchise. We talked about a lot of things. That's what we're expected to do in a budget session. That's what relatively bright people of average intelligence do. It was a brainstorming session. It was healthy. This is probably the cheapest year 
tax-wise, you could imagine in recent years, even a 3% increase this year <coughs> is 25 cents a month on a $100,000 home. On my home, that's 75 cents a month. I can handle that. Putting that aside, I would like to go back a number of years ago when we were encouraged by the city manager at that time, by Valley Vision, by lots of people to use a tool that they helped create. Everybody put their heads together to use a tool for economic development, and it was and is the URA. Highly successful in this area. I can tell you that for the last two years, I brought the message back to the council from the Association of Idaho Cities that Lewiston is a city that is highly respected for the way its URA has responded to its responsibilities and that's what we've been asking it to do. We gave it a charge just a few uh, weeks ago to work on a new plan for us looking at these three areas. One of the things that was said at the time, there was never a promise. I remember saying in a meeting very definitely, it would be nice if we could pay these off early. I was in that group, so was Councilor Bush. We were there. But we also knew that there was a message that was given to us at the time, and it's one that I need to keep in perspective. Times change, and situations change. It's not 2005. It's 2012, and we have had some home runs. We have had some victories with the investment. I'm not going to talk about diverting of money. We've invested in this community. Sometimes people think that I'm just the lame guy up here who talks about sesquicentennials and historical things and things that are fun, civic theater, and give a long list because I believe this is a wonderful place to live. But I can tell you that there's another dimension, and it's an incredibly important one. We have invested in the economic development of this community. The URA has been significant in that. We understand what Tammy Lewis has told us in terms of SEL. We all heard that from Ed and Beatrice. We know why they moved here. We know why this was created by the employees as a great company. And we know that not everything we did there was perfect by way of infrastructure. Everybody sees a success and we all want to celebrate it and we all want to take credit for it. And I think that's just what happens with success. Sometimes the wrong people take credit for it. We had people going through the library on June 8th who were our dire enemies who said, wow. And I think URA is a wow factor for us. We do, would like to put money back into the city, into the county. I think those are healthy discussions to have. I, I'm glad that Dan just brought it up. I think we need to have those visioning moments. There's no doubt that the county has gone through some very economically difficult times that the three current county commissioners did not create. We are well aware of that. And we know that they have accepted the challenge to uh, pay the, off the jail bond that they need to do. They're making great effort. We respect them for what they have done. Give them a great deal of credit because we all know that that facility is great. We know that there are some other obligations the county would like to have money for. There's some things we'd like to have money for on our list or roads and lots of other things. But I'd like to see us keep our options open in the area of urban renewal to hear from our Urban Renewal Board, not to get too excited about closing things at the moment. And that was the message in Boise. It's timing. If it is appropriate to close an area, go ahead and do it. But make sure that you have spent the time that it takes on the plan. Make sure that if you have a $1.2 million offer from a developer at this point, that it is not just something that we throw money at and say, oh golly, we'll come up with 1.2 million too. It'll be great, we'll have a road. No, we need time to assess. Will this give us an opportunity for economic development and the development of jobs in this community? I can tell you that every worker at SEL would appreciate an option to our dear friends Walmart and Costco. 
They wouldn't mind having a Target. They wouldn't mind having a Marshalls. They wouldn't mind having a Winco here in Lewiston. Those are options that our citizens deserve. And if that means that we can put that infrastructure in at a reasonable rate, then I think that's an obligation that we absolutely must accept. I agree. We had a comment this afternoon from Councillor Kleberg. It is a, we can't jump in and grab at all of those taxes without people being furious at us. It is a matter of timing. He was absolutely correct, 100 percent correct. On the other hand, we know that this is the cheapest moment for us to look at some of those things in terms of our city, its history, and where we are. I would like to respect the work that has gone on, and I would like the, and I think the greatest show of respect that we could have is to say, URA board, come to us with your recommendations. <coughs> That's the charge we gave them. I don't think that we are Napoleon. We don't have to go prakatan, prakatan, prakatan across the prairies. This isn't a hurry game to see whether we're going to be defeated or whether we're going to succeed. What we have here is a wonderful, another wonderful opportunity that Bob back there, Bob Tippett, and other people were champions of, saying this is a good tool. If the tool has run out its time, then the URA board will tell us that, and they will say that some of these things need to be closed. If it hasn't run out its time, then we need to see what it can do to create jobs in this valley. Because jobs in this valley make a lot of people happy. And I don't know about you, but I like living here. And I think it's worth our investment. I don't think it's a diverting. I don't think we need to worry about coming up with money to pay for, for graders and medical options and all sorts of other things. I think we need to talk about jobs, and real people, and real businesses. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Mr. Mayor. So, Tim Cannon. <coughs> I really do appreciate everybody's comments here tonight. It's kind of a, a, a mood point with me when it comes to the URA. I've been on the board, I think, I don't know, Bob, I think in 2005 was when I went on, I believe. Uh, been chairman the last three years, going on the fourth year uh, of this great group of people. And uh, it's been a very nuts and bolts organization. They look at a project, look at a couple projects, they go through the process, and then they decide how we're going to pay for it, whether it be bonds, whether it be in-house, whether we can make those payments uh, on our own without having to have bonds. And we've been very successful at that. Uh, North Lewiston, uh, paying off those bonds 14 years early. We didn't have to do that. We could have paid it every month, every month, whatever the payment was. We didn't have to pay it off early, but that was, that was what we wanted to do. That's just a good thing that the organization did for the taxpayer. Get the project done, get the infrastructure in, get those jobs out there that helps those jobs, that help those people in those, in those increment areas, and, and move on. Uh, when the URA was, was put into place, of course, the increment started here and then it, it went up from there. The taxing entities got this amount of money and then we get above and beyond that so that comes from, from uh, uh, more business that comes to that uh, area. Uh, the increment grows, uh, comes with uh, a, lot of different, a lot of different things. So the monies were redirected to the URA. They weren't diverted. I don't really care for that word diverted. They were redirected as per law, as per the URA, not diverted. So those funds were used to put infrastructure and to do the things that was in the plan of the URA. I can't speak for former Mayor Nesset as, as Commissioner Havens can do. He's not here to, to really tell us what his thoughts uh, and what he has uh, uh, what his vision was for the URA. So I can't speak for, for past uh, uh, former Mayor Nesset. But what I can tell you is being on the board with him is he saw the vision of what the URA could do and what it could bring to this community. And we've stayed true to that. We haven't deviated from going out and buying all this property and going out and building warehouses and that kind of thing because it's not in the plan. So we don't do that. There's other 
URAs that do that, but we don't do that. Uh, sure, we could use the money. Why not? We could take four hundred fifty thousand dollars and put in a budget. It'd help out, but it's just going to go a little here, a little there, a little there. You can't take one dollar of that money and, and get a twelve and a half dollar return, just taking four hundred fifty thousand dollars and putting it in our budget. We can't put that to city streets. That's not going to do very much. But if we can take that four hundred fifty thousand dollars, and if we can take that dollar and we can leverage that money and build new streets that are not going to have to have any maintenance for 10 years and put in infrastructure that's badly needed in a lot of areas in this community, then that's money well spent. Taxpayers aren't complaining about that. They can see the value in that. That's huge value. If I can get a $12 for every dollar in my retirement, I wouldn't be sitting here today. I'd be in Maui. <laughs> <laughs> so think about the return of that money. Yes, the county needs the money. We need the money too. But look at the vision down the road. There was a, there was a uh, uh, motion that came up in our last URA board meeting to close area one and two. It died for a lack of a second. Six board members decided there's, this is not just an open and shut case. We want to go through the process that we told you that we would go through. We want to look at the plan. We, if, if we want to close an area, we'll do that but I don't like being pressured to do that. It's not necessary. It just is not necessary. If we close an area in, in October, that money that's in the bank will be allocated out to those different taxing entities. Okay, so that money, if there's three, $400,000 in the bank, that will be given to those entities. So it just, it just doesn't go away, they'll get it. So I urge you and encourage you tonight to let the URA do what you asked us to do and let us follow through with the projects, let us follow through with the plan, let us bring you back a recommendation and if there's a closure in that recommendation, we will have it in there and then we will move forward. But that is what you asked us to do and that's what we're doing right at this very moment. Thank you. Councilor Daniel. Councilor Cannon, if $560,000 isn't that much money, what are you hoping to go after and afford on taxes? That's a lot of money to me. And that's not even including the $280,000 that help out the, camp, the, the county. You can call it diverted, you can call it re redirected, allocated, invested, invested. I really don't care what you call it. It's wrong. If we go after foregone taxes, we'll leave this on the table. I, I think we should, we should close them out. Well, again, Councilor, that's your, that's your opinion. I respect that. I respect that. But look down the vision, look down the road. Look down what we've brought to this community. Look down what more we could bring to this community. We rebuilt 1st and 5th Street for a reason. We didn't do that just to make it look pretty. We rebuilt that hopefully that somebody's going to buy that Twin City food site and have a lot of jobs come to this community. Jobs, money, houses, all kinds of things that, that enter into that. Just don't look at this right here. Look at the vision. Look at the big picture. I'm sorry, and I appreciate, I, I appreciate your, your comment, but but uh, I'm sorry. I'm looking. I'm looking at down the road a little bit, uh, a little bit more than I think what some councilors are. Councilor Stevenson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and and um, the rest of the councilors. Um, we have this item on our agenda this evening, and just for the um, folks at home and for the people in the audience who may wonder what brought that up and what we would accomplish, because it says discussion, and that's what we're doing really is beginning the discussion about what the URA and the plan that the URA has. The, the purpose this evening is not to make any decision uh, because there is a specified by statute set of, of activities that need to happen in order for a plan to be made and the council adopt and all that kind of thing. So that's not what would be the result of any of the discussion this evening. But part of the reason that it it came up that we requested it be on our agenda, as uh, I think Commissioner Havens mentioned, that the uh, Tax Commission, the Idaho Tax Commission, had said that they needed to be uh, at least alerted by uh, June 30th if there is any uh, type of change uh, being discussed so that they can help um, uh, do the appropriate planning and provide the county with the appropriate tax information. So what we um, 
would need to be discussing is whether or not we um, are willing to at least make a, a something like a memo of understanding that can go to the tax commission by that deadline of June 30th so that they can be notified. And really it's not a binding, it's not a, 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 a vote of changing the plan or specifically closing any areas, but it, it, it is um, just a way to notify the tax commission that we're thinking and going through the process that uh, Councillor um, Cannon talked about. Um, so that's kind of where we're going, is looking for uh, whether or not we would want to make a memo of understanding to provide for the tax commission. And there are lots of uh, details, as you can see by the range of the discussion, there are a lot of important things to know. There, we, we have the information about the three taxing, um, what are their, got the darn, uh, definitions, TIFs, taxing incremental tax finance incremental areas. Financing. Yeah. Tax incremental financing. Right. So we have these three areas, and uh, some <coughs> question has arisen about um, whether we've complied with the current plan, and should we consider um, voting at some future time about whether to close any areas because we've complied with the requirements of the plan. And, and I brought the plan, and I wanted to encourage people as part of this discussion that we need to be having with community people and, and the URA, the county commissioners, the city council. It's on the city's website. You could also get a copy from either the URA or from the city clerk. But I thought I would just point out a couple of lines that describe what the URA, according to the plan, what the tasking was for the URA. And on uh, at the beginning, in the executive summary, it says it was formed to promote economic development, create jobs, and improve the tax base. So pretty simple. And then the, it goes on for quite a number of pages. And um, it specifically says that the URA will seek ways to increase the overall tax base with the goal of ultimately turning the tax revenues over to the local governmental taxing entities. And so that is the question before us all, is have these projects been completed according to the plan, and so can now the, the, the um, properties turned over so that they're back on the tax, um, so that they can provide tax revenues to the county and to the city. And I think we had a figure given to us today, what was it, round numbers? $450,000, $500,000 of, was it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be going back, uh, you know, be available as uh, um, to the counties and to the county and to the city. So it's a substantial amount of money. Those are the two okay. figures the county yes. provided. It's 561133 to the city of Lewiston and $279,091 to Nez Perce County. So that would be a substantial um, uh, way for the, the entities to have revenue. And we also heard today that we're, at the current moment, the budget has not been formalized yet. We're in the process, and in the next couple of weeks, we'll have a more firm budget but that we're still uh, facing some shortfalls in the city budget, substantial ones. And uh, the staff is working to try to close those, um, that gap, but the revenues from these um, tax areas being back on the rolls would be very helpful. I just have uh, two more items to read that are part of the plan. The city council must approve the modifications, and, and Councillor Cannon alluded to that, in the same manner as they did the original plan. So you see this is not a quick approving the plan, a new plan is not overnight. And substantial changes and revisions uh, need to be voted on, et cetera. Um, so you can see that, and this is all according to state statute. Um, if bonds are paid off, the URA may expire. And that's the discussion that we're having. Some of these have been paid off, it's time to, they're expired. And that's appropriate and that's the way it was designed to be. Once the district expires, all taxing entities will collect on the entire increased valuation. And those are the types of figures that the mayor just specified there. 
So we, we had some numbers today in our budget work session that were pretty steep. There was talk about taking a 3%, a 1%, 2 or 3% property tax increase uh, up to a 14% uh, of foregone property taxes that would be available, plus uh, steep raises in fees, um, water, and other areas, plus uh, things like an LID, if some of the other folks mentioned it. Um, so it, it's a serious matter, and I think we need to uh, have a good discussion, but I support at least notifying the, the um, tax commission upon uh, the request from the, the county commissioners because it's not binding. We still are just in the discussion process, but at least we've notified them in compliance with that date. And if those, if it's appropriate to close an area, then uh, after discussing it, and I appreciate everybody coming, and I hope folks at home will be able to listen, then we should go ahead and do that. If it's not appropriate, then we uh, follow the, the statutes. Thanks. Last Thursday afternoon at the Association of Idaho Cities, Mr. Dornfest, who's the head of the Tax Commission, uh, gave a presentation to in one of our sessions and the question was asked to him about <coughs> non-binding notification and there's a couple of three things this date that is uh, everybody's worried about is a bureaucratic rulemaking that the law that, uh, that the legislature has provided uh, basically says is, is September so for his convenience, he's setting these dates out there in space so that he has time to adequately do whatever he has tax commission. And really that's not, as far as I'm concerned, it's not my problem. That uh, uh, he's, he's there for a reason and a purpose and to provide a service. And uh, if we can get him per law, then fine. I, I think that for us to cut <coughs> or, or to and uh, make a non-binding commitment. We asked him about the non-binding notification of what would happen if we changed our mind and he wouldn't answer. So to me, just body language meant that that was more binding than we would really, he wanted to allude to. So, uh, uh, but I completely agree that we, if, if it's time to close an area, I'm, I'm in total support of that but we've asked the URA board to look at those areas and get back to us with a recommendation, and I think we'll see one, hopefully by the end of August, first part of September, so that we can uh, make it, uh, at least know where we're going. Then if we want to do a non-binding notification to the tax commission at that time, go ahead, because whatever we tell them, we're committed to. That was the... the the uh, uh, intent and meeting I got out of, uh, of what Mr. Dornfest didn't say. He refused to answer the question directly and was asked of him several times. Um, uh, but that being said, uh, uh, I, I completely agree with uh, what uh, Councillor Kleberg had said, that it would be nice to have that $500,000 additional tax money for, for the city council. But uh, with a, a 12 to one return ratio, they're talking about, uh, uh, I think the, the question came up on backfill, how much the backfill money would we lose from the state? That was $47,000. If we continue and just do what we need to do with the 12 to one ratio, uh, and that would be $564,000 returned to us if we continue on with our plan and not worry about the money now. And, and, uh, the, and I guess I'm not too worried about making that deadline because next year or this session, that backfill money could go away at the whim of, of the legislature. We're at their whim and will of the legislature for every year. So if they're short of cash, I can guarantee you that's probably going to be on the table to be cut. Um, they haven't been bashful about cutting back on, on revenue sharing, of freezing our revenue sharing and not participating in growth. And that's fine because that's the purview of the state legislature. They're looking at things 
uh, at the state level. But I think that for us to do the proper planning and make proper uh, decision making for uh, our city, I think that we need to let the urban renewal do what we've asked because uh, the board is made up of a public and private partnership. We've got some folks in there that are private business that have been here for a long time. They're community leaders that give us some good vision and counsel. And I think that we need to let that board do the work. And, and if the urban renewal comes back and says, you know, we put the pencil to this and it's just not penciling out and makes sense, we ought to close one or all of them, I'll completely back their recommendation. But I think that uh, we need to give them the uh, time to do their work. And then send a notification in to Mr. Dornfest when we're ready and hopefully it's before September. Councilor Kleber. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, I would hope it would be before September because what we potentially could be deciding might also have an impact on our budget for this year. Not just this year, but for the 2015 budget. That money getting put back on the tax rolls is going to help us out down the road. Not just this year. It's not a one-shot deal. And I'm not... You know, the Urban Renewal Agency has, has done everything they've been asked of, and I'm not looking to close out the agency or get rid of the agency or any stretch of imagination. It's a, there are a couple areas that we need to take a look at, a good hard look at, and I think they're probably, I, I agree with Commissioner Havens, I think they probably have at this time run their course. It's my opinion. But that being said, um, you know, if you want to reopen that area, make another modification to the plan, yeah, okay, now you're starting out back down here again and hopefully grow that up. But how long did it take to grow this last go around? Started in 2005, Very in eight time. years, yeah. a big scheme of things. That's, but then you, that's you really are nothing. A, then it, 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 your a, uh, a plan uh, goes away or we terminate in, in 2028, Laura? 2029. So you have to look at, you have to build up those cash reserves and then you have to find the project and then you have to, if you have to go get bonds and you have to pay it back within that length of time. So your, so your window is shorter. If we've already been paying off 24 year bonds and six seven years well we've been very fortunate but so that, sometimes that may not work well but like i said so i agree with Councilor daniels and uh, and that is the biggie and i think that's gonna be a real biggie when our budget uh we have to vote on the budget in august we have three readings we ought to have some information before that and like i said i said it this afternoon and i'll say it again if if we leave this out there and go after foregone taxes, it will be a very, very tough sell for the citizens of this community. I can guarantee you that. And this crowd here is a pretty good-sized crowd. You can quadruple it. We have to move to another venue. Thank you. I guess I'm looking for consensus from Council. Councilor Stevenson. I move that we uh, send the tax commission the uh, letter that was requested by the county commissioners and that is uh, I just covered it up the notification uh, that we're thinking about uh, modifying the a letter of intent yes a letter of intent to the tax commission as um, suggested by the county commissioners which areas are those for the record if you're making the motion I'd like you to specify which areas The county commissioner indicates one and two. For clarification, that's the business park and... Business park for North Lewiston. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to uh, send a letter of uh, notification to the uh, tax commission for possible future closure of areas one and two for the urban renewal district. Any discussion? Councilor Kleber. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm not going to support the motion because I think we can wait till the end of July. I don't think we have to have it done by the end of this week. I feel the same way, Mr. Mayor. I think doing that is, a, is, is going to be binding, and if we let them know that we're in a process or thinking about closing Area 1 and 2, that that's, they're going to take that as law, and that bothers me. And so I would not be in favor of this motion at all. 
Councillor Daniel. If we wait till the end of July, then we, we might as well do it now because the URA didn't even think this is important enough to hold a meeting in July. So I don't understand I why believe we do it. We don't, we don't know what URA was thinking. No, Sorry. we're not having a meeting in July. <laughs> Mr. Marsh, didn't you say that you would have a meeting or you would vote to have a meeting or? I would make myself available anytime I want to meet. That's not, I'm on one vote. Yeah. <laughs> I'm willing to amend my motion uh, for uh, end of July. Not really, you need to amend it at that point then? I don't understand what you're amending the motion. I said by June to send a letter by the date as, as suggested by the county commission. Let's second that. So the amendment, uh, the, it's been asked to amend the motion to change the date from the end of June to the end of July. Sure. So July 30th, <coughs> 31st, whatever the last day of July is, okay. I guess. Fourth Monday. Whatever. Uh, 31st. 31st, okay. City Councilor Manager. Daniel. So yeah. if if approved, this would uh, this would just be a standing motion that would happen only if we didn't take any other action? I, I guess I'm confused. The whole letter would go out uh, July 31st. That would uh, be non-binding to okay. the notification to the Tax Commission that we're intending on closing areas 1 and 2 is what the motion is on the okay. floor. I just wanted to... I was Mr. just trying to clarify yeah. the date by rule of the Idaho Tax Commission is the fourth Monday in July. Oh. Fourth Monday. Okay. That would be July 22nd. Okay. Fourth Monday. Do I need to amend it again to get so it right? the So <laughs> it would be July 22nd if that's okay. acceptable for a date for the one that seconded the amendment. Yep. Okay. So the any discussion on the amendment to the motion on the floor? which is changing the date from the end of June to July 22nd. Councillor Daniel. I'll support this, but I would like to ask the URA to convene a meeting. I would like to hear the recommendation, so it would be nice before then. Yes. Again, Mr. Mayor, I'm not going to support that. Uh, again, you're tying the, the urban renewal's hands on the direction that you gave us. We understand if we need to close an area, we'll close it. But again, you're putting us down to where we won't have the plan redesigned by the end of July, and you're asking us to, 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 or the council here, to support a letter of intent to close those areas. Getting the cart before the, the horse before the cart here, I think a little bit. I, I don't understand the big rush of why we need to do that. Let the URA board go through the process and let's, let us come back with a recommendation. Then we'll notify the tax commission. Councillor Stevenson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't believe the intent of this letter of intent is that it would be closed by that date. It's just a letter notifying them so that they can give us, as a city, uh, planning information. That's uh, city planning information. No. Yeah, tax. Uh, what it does is it helps set the tax levy right. for the county, but they can do that e just as easily in August. Uh, but because for their bureaucratic convenience, he has set those dates right. to give him some time. But by state law, we don't have to give him that information till August. Yes. Thank you. So maybe I'm missing something, but I thought these were the recommendations. There's a chart here of projects, 6th Avenue North, uh, 12th to 20th, 12th to 18th, uh, 12th Street, 6th Avenue, 7th Avenue, Sanitary Sewer, Harry Wall, these are all projects. Councilor, those, are, those were uh, projects were brought forth to the Urban Renewal Board for discussion, but nothing has been put into place on those, any of those projects. That was just a worksheet, basically a discussion uh, of areas that are, are possible uh, projects for those areas. Okay. Those are not, that is not a revised plan by any means. Oh, that was for cool. your that was for for your information to let you know of the different areas and the different plans or the different uh, projects that we could tentatively do information for the council to look at sure okay so and we could take a look at those and say well 
So if we didn't do any of these, then I guess the plan's the same as the plan, and we've pretty much done everything that we were set out to do. That's exactly right. Okay. So, so let I us go look through at that as a recommendation. I let us go through that process. Some. Okay. So the amendment on the floor is to change the date from June, end of June to July 22nd. Is there any more discussion upon changing the date for the amending? I'm not going to be supportive of changing the date. I, I really think that we got here tonight kind of pressured into the position of having a discussion. I'm glad we had the discussion, and I think we have, need to have more of it. And I think the URA needs to, uh, needs to have that discussion. We need to give them the time to do that. We did do that. We gave them instructions. I think it's premature to send a letter and it looks a little bit foolish for us to say we're going to possibly close something when that may or may not happen. It just doesn't make good sense to me. I'm not going to support it. Okay. Councilor Randall. <clears throat> I agree with Dr. Hartman. I want to give the uh, folks a chance to come back with a recommendation before we send any letter of intent. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion on the amendment to the motion on the floor, which is changing the date? Hearing none, those in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Uh, let's see, do a raise of hands. Three. Those opposed? Okay, amendment fell, so now the motion on the floor is to send a notification the end of June to the tax commission. No. Yes, we're yeah. voting on the amendment. You amended right. the original motion, the amendment failed. And so the original motion okay. is for the end of June. So any discussion on the, uh, the motion on the floor to send tax notification the end of June? Councilor Daniel. Um, I, I just want to re, you know, it's obvious where this vote's going to go, that I really hope the URA meets in July now, because we'd like to have that recommendation, because if we don't, then we're going to miss our deadline. I think the, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Councillor Daniel, uh, if that's important, it's important to the URA. Uh, we will meet, our bylaws basically state that there are plan basically states that we meet the second Tuesday of every month. Uh, Laura Von Tersch, I believe, was gone. Is that right, Laura? We will have a meeting uh, and notify everyone of that meeting uh, in July. We will hold a meeting. Thank you. Is the motion still on the floor, or are you going to withdraw? Or? Councilor Stevens. I just wanted to reiterate again that this is an, an just a notification to the tax commission that we have some planning in process. It doesn't mean that we've made a decision or anything like that. So it's only a courtesy to the tax commission so that they can provide information to us so that they're not surprised and so that we have also information before we make a decision about whether uh, what we're doing about property taxes in the city of Lewiston. That we need to be, there's a proper order of notifying people and that's all this is. This is not a decision about um, updating the plan or anything like that. It's just a courtesy according to what the tax commission has asked for and it's it it's just the process it doesn't mean that we have to go through with any um closing or anything like that i just wanted to emphasize that it's just a process Councilor Ram, could i ask uh city attorney what is a normal feeling of the de definition of letter of intent when you're like signing for a contract or something like that uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, it's pretty much exactly what you say. It's a letter of intent to do something. Um, and I know that this is a, has been referred to as a letter of intent for possibilities and those kinds of things, but generally speaking, I would, if I were at the tax commission, I would presume that that's what the city intended to do. That would, you know. That's what I'm afraid of. That's what well, Again, that, uh, I want to reiterate that Mr. Dornfest was asked several times uh, what he his definition of non-binding was uh, for this letter of intent and he didn't give an answer 
Councillor Stevens. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going by what the request was from the Nez Perce County Commissioners, and they said nothing about a letter of intent. It was only just notifying them of possible um, plans so that they have the courtesy heads up. It doesn't say a letter of intent. It doesn't say a memo of understanding, an MOU, or anything like that. It's just a courtesy notification to them by a certain date so that they can be advised. I would call for a vote on the question of the, from the city council and not from the county commissioner. Okay. Any other discussion on the question on the floor? Mr. Um, Mr. Mayor. Councilor Daniel. Um, which I'll, I'll wait till after the vote. Sorry, I, I, I have a, a motion to close debate. Okay. Those in favor of the motion to send notification the end of June to Tax Commission on possible urban renewal area closures, raise your hand. Those opposed, raise your hand. Motion fails uh, four to two, or five to two. two. Okay. So we'll wait for the urban renewal to come back with council here. Thank you. July. Thank you, councilors. We will come back with our recommendation. I appreciate it very Councilor much. Councilor Daniel. Uh, are there any councilors that would be open to sending a, a letter of intent for just one of the districts? It's floating out there. Make a motion. Well, I, we're, still, we're, still, we're still in discussion, so I don't have to make a motion at this point. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, so. I think that... For me, I, I think I want to wait for the urban renewal to come back with with uh, their recommendation and whatever that is. Like I said, if they come back and say, you know what, guys, this doesn't pencil out. Let's close them all. I'll support that. Uh, but uh, I think that we've charged the urban renewal to do some work for us. Uh, I think they take that charge seriously, and I think we need to, we owe them the respect to carry out that charge. Okay. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mayor. Councillor Stevens. Thank you. But I, I would like to make sure that to specify that we still are the ultimate ones making the decision. Just because the URA is coming with a recommendation does not mean that we're just saying yes, sir, no, sir. In other words, it's our task to evaluate given the job we have making a budget and figuring on how our um, citizens would be affected by taxes and so on. We still have that responsibility. So in other words, it's not just a question of hearing a recommendation and saying, okay, thank you, we agree. We need to evaluate it and see whether that's appropriate. And I think that's part of the what the council does is a deliberation right. of our recommendation. But I think we need to let give them time to make the to develop the recommendations for us to consider. Mr. Mayor, Councilor Stevenson, can, you're exactly right. The the council approves the plan, right. and that was their job. And then we put the plan forth and we make it happen. But we fully expect that, and that's the process. So good. With that, we'll move on to the next item, vouchers payable. I'll entertain a motion to approve vouchers payable to Han Rental and Han Supply for $1,128.11 with Councilor Kleberg abstaining for conflict of interest. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve vouchers payable to Han Rental and Han Supply for $1,128.11. Is there any discussion by council? Hearing none, those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries 6-1. Next item of business is a lease agreement. Uh, Mr. Bennett. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Uh, this item was continued from the last council meeting uh, because there were some um, issues with the language within the lease agreement that needed to be sorted out before we could bring it back to you. That's been done, and uh, we uh, now bring the lease agreement back before you to um, review. Uh, Tim Barker is here and prepared to go over. Nope. Yes, he is. He's prepared to go over the changes to the lease <coughs> with you and uh, so we can get this taken care of. And Montessori School can get into the building. 
Mayor, Council, thanks for uh, letting us come back with this one. Uh, Tim Barker, Parks and Recreation Director for the city. Um, I apologize for not getting the revised lease to you until just before this meeting. Uh, so I've come prepared to discuss those changes if you'd like me to. Uh, both the city attorney and I have reviewed those um, and we're very comfortable with, with how it reads. That's right. I think for good. Mr. Barker's benefit, we got the changes between 5 and 5.30, so that's why you have them so late. I think for council's uh, benefit, you need to go through what changes sure. are from what are Not a problem. our packet, please. So what we'll go through is the new version that was handed out to you. Uh, changes, I'll, I'll try to, even the simple ones I've got highlighted, so bear with me. Uh, first page of the lease, it says the effective date is now gonna be July 1st. That was a change from the last version that we had. Uh, Megan Chavez Anderson's name was added to that same paragraph in addition to the Children's House Montessori School. Originally it was just Montessori School. Uh, one, one change that uh, they felt more comfortable with, uh, let's see, just under the <coughs> description of the location, under the underlined and, and uh, bolded one section, for the months of July and August, the leasee will pay a rent in the amount of $100 per month, and that's instead of the $1,100. There are some uh, fixes and painting and some things that they would like to do prior to moving in September 1 is what our plan is. Uh, I didn't feel comfortable allowing them in to make those changes without any fee attached to that. Uh, there's some work additionally that the city will need to perform that I've addressed later on, that we've addressed later on in the lease. So that's what that statement notes. And then it says, goes on and states beginning on September 1st, 2013 and ending August 31st, 2018, Lisey will make the payments in the amount of $1,100 a month. And that's the lease um, amount that we've agreed upon. Uh, later on in that paragraph, it makes reference to the uh, consumer price index would go into effect after the first five years so that the rate would be adjusted, uh, negotiated, and then adjusted based uh, on the consumer price index every year at the end of May. The top of page two. Uh, let's see. Uh, just makes reference to the fact that um, assuming the occupancy permit will be um, available and ready for them to move in, September 1, they wanted to add a clause. Um, that paragraph is in reference to page four, item 5B, uh, very top of page four. Those are items that we've discussed that the city will go in and change prior, or fix prior to uh, them starting their school, which would be September 1st, and those should be done by August 15th. Uh, when that was added, I have no, um, feeling that there, there would be any reason why we couldn't ag agree to and, and go in and make those recommendations. Uh, but that's what the top of page two is in reference to. Um, basically, that paragraph states that the $100 per month rental lease would continue until um, January 1st if we do not have those items completed by August 15th. Uh, the main re purpose for that is they would like to be in there for the start of school at the beginning of September. Uh, they'd rather not move in, and I can let Megan come in and speak for herself when I'm done, but um, my understanding is that they would prefer to not come in midterm in the fall. It's either uh, be in there for the school to start at the beginning of September or in January. The bottom of page two uh, just makes reference to uh, actually, I think that is in, in the other portion, but it makes reference to that the leasee uh, will not, um, will provide uh, receipts and information regarding any repairs and things that they do to the facility, uh, not to exceed $12,000. Top of page four, again, is that reference to uh, what the city's obligation for repairs are prior to August 15th. On page five, under the eight section, 
uh, makes reference to uh, the city giving notice of 48 hours advance notice prior to an inspection and going into the facility. Uh, prior to that, it was 24 hours. I don't see any issues with that. Any work that needs to be done, we should have planned uh, much prior to that 48 hours. And then the only last change um, to what you originally had was on page seven, correction of Carrie's last name. Mr. Mayor, <coughs> just a quick question, Mr. Barker, from me. For years and years and years, the rental for this went back into the library directly, and I think it's now going into your budget to maintain this building and to, if there's Correct. anything left over, to help pay for the janitor that you picked up on your budget? Correct. Prior to, uh, a 1000 of that went towards the library fund, and $100 came back to my department to manage the facility. So it's flip-flopped. Or not, not even flip-flopped. It's just in your budget. Okay. <clears throat> With the assumption you'll take care of the building. We'll and take care, maintain. It'll become part of our, 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 our budgeting. And you, you're in charge of the maintenance of the main mm -hmm. library. Yeah. Councilors, have any other questions regarding the lease? Mr. Parker. I'd love to invite Megan up if she wanted to say a few things. Megan Chavez Anderson. Hi, I'm Megan Chavez Anderson. I live at 1102 10th Avenue here in Lewiston. Um, I'm the owner as well as the lead teacher at Children's House Montessori School. And I explained to you a couple weeks ago about what we do. Um, we're a private school, we're expanding into first, second, and third grade, we offer just another choice um, for the families in this community. And one thing that has amazed me is just in two years, I have a very long waiting list. I have, without any advertising, I have over half of my elementary classroom filled. And one thing, it's been really interesting to listen to you all tonight talk about urban renewal and investing in this valley and all the wonderful things that all of you do, which I agree with, I am so proud of this town. I moved back here from Portland, Oregon. I've been back for six years and there's a reason why I came back to this town to start a small business, raise my son here, have my family here. And I believe that this, this business in this building will thrive and I'm not going anywhere. So I know that this building has had a lot of turnover um, in the past few years. Just since I've been back, I've seen it turn over twice. And that is frustrating to me. I want to give you guys a, a ma an amazing building and a beautiful park connected to our downtown with a business that's strong. So, you know, Tim and I have talked a lot about the repairs that need to be done. And honestly, once these repairs are done and it's invested in just a little bit by the city and by myself and, and um, the money that my business, you know, creates to put back into that building, I promise you, it will be something that lasts for a very long time. And I really hope that, uh, that you agree with, with the lease that we've worked on. I, I feel like there's been quite a big effort on Tim's part and Jamie's part and my attorney and I. And so if you have any questions about the school or, or what it is that we do, um, I, I would definitely answer them. I also want to let you know that I've been talking a little bit with um, Tim and Mr. Branting about the possibility of you know restoration grants, and um, we want to preserve this historical building and make it beautiful again. So, and make children happy and families happy. Thank you for your consideration. Spread that enthusiasm, will you please? <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> we really need that. Yes. Council, okay. okay. have any? Questions of uh, Ms. Chavez Anderson. Is a motion appropriate at this point? Motion, uh, consider a motion to approve the lease as submitted. So, so moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the lease agreement as submitted. Is there any discussion by council? Hearing none, those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries 7 1. Congratulations. Well, I hope that all of you come to our open house. I, I really cannot <coughs> wait to show you the building again. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't know. I'm hoping that it will be by August. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
We'll move on to unfinished and new business. Uh, City Councilor comments. Is there any this evening? Mr. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't go by without doing that. Uh, I do want to talk and uh, ask for your support of one of our commission members, Deanna Kinziger, who is hospital, has been hospitalized in intensive care in um, Spokane. She's on our urban forestry and cemetery uh, commission. She's been very ill. Uh, as of Friday, they didn't think that she was likely to make it through, uh, but she had a real turnaround early today and is speaking and talking and they hope that that will be a breakthrough for her. <coughs> she has been in and out of the hospital. She's a faculty member at LHS. Um, please keep her uh, in mind as you go forward. Um, July 10th is coming fast. Keep the day open. We have a lot of things planned and it's moving mm. rapidly. Uh, if you're not going to the rodeo this weekend, the Civic Theater has the children's production with uh, Mother Nature there, and my granddaughter is Mother Nature. <laughs> and believe me, that little mother hen can run nature itself. So uh, I would encourage you, if you are not out rodeo rodeoing, I don't know how you say that word. Rodeoing. <laughs> I'm going to have to try a different word. Uh, you can go watch Mother Nature try to combat uh, Jack Frost. Okay. Uh, any other councilor comments? Councilor Daniel. You know, with, with the 4th of July here, while you're out celebrating, just, you know, this, this issue, I'm sure it's important to everyone, but just keep your thoughts and prayers in mind for Sergeant Bergdahl. He's been held captive for the past almost four years now. Imagine, imagine what you've done in the past four years and imagine instead you've been held captive by the Taliban in Pakistan or Afghanistan. So just keep them in your thoughts and prayers. So. Okay. Um, Saturday, uh, to, to my enjoyment and excitement, uh, I was at a ribbon cutting at the Harley Davidson dealership here in town. Uh, thanks to their parts department, I do have my 1984 Harley up and running again. So uh, anyway, it was nice to see uh, another business coming in. I got to talk with the Ernst, the owners of the business here and also in Coeur d'Alene and Spokane, and they're very excited and enthused. The general manager, Mr. Klum, that moved here is real excited. He's a Boise transplant, so we will convert him to a be a vandal, I hope. So, vandal supporter. But uh, anyway, uh, it's just some good positive things. Uh, we had the Cherry Cherry uh, concert with the, at the Civic Theater this Saturday night that uh, looked like pretty much a packed house, and it's a fundraiser for the food bank and uh, and the Civic Theater. So I think the folks that were there in attendance, I know they got a heck of a show from those guys. Uh, last week, Councilor Ortman and I sp spent most of the week at the Association of Iowa Cities Conference, uh, attended a couple of uh, sessions directly on urban renewal, and it's definitely a, uh, a hot topic. Uh, I guess the thing that struck me was the amount of senators and representatives there uh, at our luncheon on Thursday and at breakfast Thursday. Uh, uh, definitely they understand that there, there is, needs to have some conversations. They understand that the cities, counties, and highway districts are hurting for tax funds for, for, for uh, road repair. And uh, one of the things that they'd uh, shown was that uh, in, the, in 1999 that uh, about one-third of our tax dollars went to road repair and, and last year over two-thirds. It just flopped from what it was in 1999. So hopefully they come up with a solution for a little relief for us that we're not relying on property taxes to fund our road, road repair. So it'll be exciting to see uh, the discussions going forward. Um, with that, that's all I have. Mr. Mayor, before Tim you do it Cannon. to the city manager, I'd be remiss in <clears throat> not uh, congratulating the Clearwater River Casino and the Nespers Tribe for their grand opening for their new facility. Beautiful facility. I'll tell you, they talked about their vision and, and they had some great vision. I hope they come talk to us once in a while about their vision because I think it could rub off on us a little bit. But uh, just a beautiful facility. Uh, Great job, a lot of people out there for that grand opening, and I 
congratulate the Nez Perce tribe and, and, uh, and their leaders for uh, having the vision uh, out there. So it's, it, it's beautiful to our community. Mr. Mayor, just one more thing, if I may. Last week in, in Boise at the uh, picnic at the Historical Society, Marty Peterson did a presentation uh, for and, and really talked about the cap first Idaho territorial capital. And at the end of the thing, he said, with all the scoundrels involved in government at the time, he's not sure why either Boise or Lewiston would ever have wanted to be the capital of <laughs> Idaho. <coughs> uh, but he did extend uh, an invitation to the people there to, to come here. If you haven't been in Boise recently, the 150th sesquicentennial celebration uh, exhibit is there. It is phenomenal inside the historical museum. Uh, Lewiston is the featured um, place inside the old penitentiary. Uh, currently, if you go out there to look at that, the is that good or bad? Oh, well, it, <laughs> the very first thing you see is the picture of the Idaho uh, first territorial capital, and the fact that, of course, the charge to have the prisons was part of the. Uh, legal work that took place here in Lewiston. Um, so it was it was a grand adventure for all of us. We received accolades uh, from both the current president and the incoming president of the association. And they had a great chance to see, because we received uh, recognition uh, for two awards that the mayor has in his possession. Uh, one recognizing the library and the other our very explosive event, uh, the creation of the Fifth Street Corridor. Mm -hmm. uh, beautiful work done, nice display. Joel uh, Plaskin from our uh, community development uh, was there with the display. We thank him and Chris Davies for, and, and Dan Marsh for participating along with Jim Bennett. I think Lewiston was well represented and respected for what's happened here. There isn't anybody in that group who can't say sesquicentennial. <laughs> can't spell it, but they, they can't spell it, but they can say it. <laughs> and I just want to uh, say, Mr. Bennett, thank you and staff for putting that uh, display together. That was a, a real first class exhibit, and we did get a lot of very positive comments coming through. So that was good. Any city manager comments this evening? No, sir, not this evening. Okay. Advisory board and commission appointments. I'll be changing the, uh, making one other note was Mr. Uh, Councilor Randall will be appointed to the airport commission. Okay, per your, you and Thera's discussion request, so we'll make that note on the appointment. Okay. Anything else for board, advisory boards and commissions? Uh, work session agenda topics. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session regarding real property and litigation per Idaho Code Section 67-23451 C and F. Mr. Mayor, I move that we go into executive session for real property and litigation according to Idaho Code Section 67-2345, Section 1, uh, Paragraph C and F. Second. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, to go into executive section, session regarding real property and litigation. Uh, those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Okay, we'll take a five minute break and then we'll convene to executive session and then we'll adjourn immediately after. There will be no action after the executive session. Thank you everyone for coming. Your ears. <laughs>